If you like growing food, then you might like eating food. And if you like eating food, then you might like cooking food. Well, go check out the first season of Backyard Kitchen available on Tubi for free. Available on all smart TVs and online. That's T-U-B-I. All free. First season of Backyard Kitchen. So our patrons asked for summer squash you should grow in the series. But then I realized summer squash and zucchini are the same things. And then the research basically said the same thing. So this is you should grow summer squash and or zucchini right here on the Backyard Gardens podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens podcast, where we talk about all things gardening. We are your hosts, Ben and Batavia, and you can find me gardening in the country. And you'll find me gardening in the city. Get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening where we learn to grow and grow for change. All right. Special thank you to our patrons for helping choose these. If you'd like to have input in our episodes or you would like to get two free episodes a month, two extra episodes, excuse me, please come check us out on Patreon. Uh, We'd love to have you. We'd love to help you build our community. We are almost to our goal of hitting the amount of patrons for us to start a chat room or something like that for you guys. So please come check us out and help support the show. That being said, one of the most frustrating vegetables on the market is here. And we're going to talk about it. So I'm going to disagree with you just straight out. I have... Summer squash includes zucchini, crook neck, straight neck, patty pan, and other similar type. So zucchini is a summer squash, but not all summer squash are zucchini. Here we go. And I am going to agree that since I've met you, I've had nothing but trouble with summer squash. Yeah. <laughs> I just, you know. Hey, you know, it is what I am. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say it. So let's get started and we're going to tell you how to start seeds. So you can obviously you can buy transplants or you can Mm -hmm. direct sow them. Um, If you're going to direct sow them, wait till after your last frost. And I would let the soil warm up a little bit beforehand. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going to say about 50 degrees, you know, which means your temperatures are always hovering around 50 ish degrees. They're not really dipping into the 30s much or anything like that. Uh, You can start Mm -hmm. seeds indoors. And the good thing about these is once you start hardening off all of your other stuff, you can start Mm -hmm. um, these seeds indoors because they only need about two to four weeks inside because they grow so fast. Um, That's an excellent point. They are a great seed for you to, if you don't start seeds, to learn how to start seeds in some way because they're big, they're easy to handle, and they're very fast. So Mm -hmm. it's really good um, to, to start with sowing seeds. And then as far as the height goes, so we've determined in the previous episode that Batavia have different information, so I'll let her fill in. Um, they get about two feet tall and roughly about three to four feet wide. These are vining plants by nature, so they can very well get five, six, seven feet long. And it's not high, but long. So just remember that. Um, and you have planting recommendations for D- depths yes. and stuff. Yeah, so I actually am going to go with um, they're more compact than you would have like a melon when it comes to vines, yes. right? They're more compact than you would have like runner beans and even more compact when it comes to like tomato plants. However, you do have huge, large, if you plant zucchini or squash in a field, just watch it. Like it's going to get huge, tall and wide. So be uh, conscious of that. You're going to go about an inch deep when you're planting it, you know, the seeds in the soil, whether you're starting indoors or not. I love that that you commented on this is a really easy plant if you're new to starting seeds because it absolutely is um, and I love the tip which I I don't know if I looked at it that way as I start to harden some of my other summer veggies off that's a good time to start the seeds indoors because I've been doing them direct so for the last couple of years um, just one less thing for me to worry about but I like that tip um, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about um foes and companions because you've already covered plant size right yeah the one thing i want to add to that is just remember that these plants love water 
Mm-hmm. They really mm-hmm. want to be watered a lot. So, but uh, go ahead. This is this is the first place I've actually seen something beyond the typical one inch of water. Um, I actually have notes that say one to two inches of rain water, ideally yeah. per week. But you know, water is water at this point. If you <laughs> don't have it raining, it's, it is what it is. Um, so you don't want to have the plant saturated. You just want that soil to be moist, uh, which I know you love that word. Companions and foes. So. I mean, I, I'm go. not going to complain about it. Nasturtiums, corn, um, some would say lettuce, which probably wouldn't be growing through the full season, but there it is. And melons. Um, I also have dill, legumes, marigolds, and borage as companions. And I've been, I think it's maybe, maybe it's something in like a, a lot of English folks talk about borage. I've never really heard about it You're thinking talked of about borage. much. No, I'm thinking about borage, B-O-R-A-G-E. Oh, okay. I'm it's thinking about like... Um, I'm starving too, brother. Yeah, the three bears, <laughs> you know, the porridge on the table. So... Why would I be thinking about that in the midst I, you of know, this? I don't know. That's what I thought about. <laughs> so, you have something to add for companions? Because I have conflicting uh, foes. Yeah, why don't you go through the foes and then we can kind of <laughs> discuss for a second. So this is, I like this de- type of detail. Melons are also listed as a foe. Again, these are two different sets of sources, but it's because they're heavy feeders and they can take nutrients away from your squash plants. As I said in a previous episode, you as a gardener can manage against that. Um, beets, which because squash are going to be growing in kind of the heat of the summer and beets typically are not. Uh, so just take that note. But fast growing crops like beets can disrupt the sensitive roots of a squash plant i had never heard of this until now again i'm only trying to use trusted sources so that's what they share fennel it's a hardy uh flowering plant with fast growth rate that can stunt the growth of neighboring squash plants you have my ears open when you talk about stunting the growth of something uh potatoes is my last foe and it is these root vegetables can monopolize the nutrients in your garden soil and starve squash plants nearby did you say tomatoes i don't know about that one I said potatoes. But did you say no, tomatoes? I didn't say tomatoes. I did not say tomatoes. Yeah, so I have a foe of tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I, I want to go back to the companions. I I would be curious to know if anybody really plants peppermint next to their squash. I mean, if you put a peppermint plant in your garden by the end of the year, you're going to have a whole garden of peppermint. So, I didn't say peppermint. Oh, you didn't? Oh, well, it's on my no. list. Sorry. I thought okay, you did. Okay. <laughs> it's on my list. Yeah, that's another one. See? So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, let's be conf- let's be straight up again, three sisters type situation here, beans and mm-hmm. corn. So, um, mm-hmm. never planted it, not interested in it, but you know, it is worth saying mm-hmm. the term just because, um, yeah, I don't know about, because I have foes, I have pumpkins as my foes too, which I lump those in with melons for some reason. Maybe it's just cause they're vining, but yeah, I, I imagine the idea of strangling the, um, the squash plants. Maybe. And I agree with you completely when it's like, hey, you can manage by feeding more. I, I agree with you on that one. So um, we'll move on to pests. So, yes. Okay. If you're not if you're not watching the video, you can see that it, or you can't see that I'm doing like mannerisms. Um, squash fine borer. Okay. It's out there. The little bastard. Um, squash bugs, which look like ladybugs, but they're orange. So mm-hmm, there's that. Mm-hmm. Um, cucumber beetles and aphids. So I'm going to say this about squash vine borer. I don't know how to not have them. Okay. So don't ask me. I'm just going to say, like, we've done videos, <laughs> we've done podcasts about it, we've talked about it at nauseum. Like, I can tell you what I'm doing this year to combat it. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blame it on you. So I was talking to Miss Batavia and when I was talking to her, I was like, oh, I see a squash vine borer, like the moth oh, right yeah. now. She's like, oh, you know, it's too late, don't you? And I'm like, yeah, but it's cool. So I killed it. First of all, it was full of dust. It was weird. And then like two days later, I go, look, the base of mine are just riddled with holes. So I decided to pile some soil on top of the stems of my plants to try and get them to root further up from the damage and maybe they can kind of take over. So that's kind of that, you know, in the past I've trimmed them heavily and just tried to like keep them in check and remove the damage. And this year I'm just like, you know what? Take it because 
They grow so fast by seed. I'm just going to go ahead and restart them. So when the squash vine borer moves on, they won't come back and I can have a second crop. So I can transplant mine in. If I start them now, you know, within a month, I can put them in and get a whole second crop out of them because they are fairly fast growers. Yeah. So since we're only halfway through this mini, so by time wise and topic, we have enough time to pause and acknowledge how off base you were with your impersonation of me. <laughs> <laughs> so for those that are watching the video, look, look, I'm trying to dial it back to not give what you gave. For those that are watching the video, go like tap your screen, you know, like three times, go back like 30 seconds. That's not what I do. Right. And then for those that are listening again, let's rewind. You you could hear it in his voice, too. Mm-hmm. There was a sassiness like. Like, oh, you have squash before me, but that's okay because they're already dead and you know it. I'm like, wait, we were, we weren't on video. We were on the phone. It absolutely came across like, you know, this call time of death, son. Like, it's done. <laughs> that's basically what you say. That's what I heard. And it's true, I though. Had to say it pest, is true. Though, I mean, yeah. I went through and I looked, and the reason, the only, so that my plants look good. Mm-hmm. And the only reason why I looked down is because I saw an egg on a stem and I was like, here we go. Yeah. And sure enough, you know, um, and I think I'm just, I'm tired, man. It just, it mm-hmm, makes me tired. Mm-hmm. And squash bugs too. Squash bugs are, you know, I don't have as much crazy damage by them, but you need to stay on top of those as well. And those yeah. are the ones where everybody's looking for the eggs under the leaves and stuff like that. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Just know that they are an orange that look like, or they're an orange bug that look like ladybugs. Okay. Yeah. So don't confuse them. I have... Um, when we had that conversation and I gave you all of that wonderful attitude, um, I have been paranoid since then. I have one squash plant that's up and I keep on walking past looking at it, you know, because there there's some varieties that put on leaves that look like they have uh, powdery mildew. And so th- yeah. this is one of those. And so th- my first look is like, oh, shoot, you know, but then I'm like, no, that's not what it is. So now, I, I, you know, the stem is, is pronounced and I'm looking at it like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> you know? So um, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to keep at it. I'm just going to keep on planting them. I have squash in a couple of different places in my garden as well. Like it's a numbers game in my mind at this that's point. That's how it is for me. I have no other it's solution. You go ahead and I, I get yeah. my first crop in. I'll get a couple, a little bit of a harvest off and then I'll come mm-hmm. back and do another one um and that's just how it is um then yeah. you know it's diseases diseases is exactly what i'm going to go into so you said powdery mm-hmm. mildew um mm-hmm. squash blossom blight q cucumber bacterial wilt i believe is what i wrote i can't even read my handwriting mm-hmm. and mosaic virus so mm-hmm. um the powdery mildew we've talked about that before there are a lot of tr- um quote unquote treatments for it the best treatment is prevention so yep. um you know watering ground level um making sure there's airflow not overcrowding plants don't plant in where there was a plant the year before that had powdery mildew mm-hmm. don't compost plants that have powdery mildew all that stuff and that's the i think that's the most common if i was going to mm-hmm. break down mm-hmm. what's common here at squash vine borer squash bugs and um powdery mildew those are the main yeah. issues you're going to deal with up until the last couple of years it was absolutely powdery mildew for me but now yeah that's what i'm experiencing let me ask you this um i've seen as a potential remedy to try to manage against squash vine bore and then separately i've seen it as a, a potential remedy to manage things like powdery mildew like pruning but in my mind it feels like you're basically creating a hole for the little bastard to basically crawl into. Well, it doesn't. So the way it lays its egg, it doesn't climb into it. It lays it on the outside. So yeah, you can prune. But like I stated earlier, um, I like past couple years, I mean, I pruned the crap out of them, you know, Mm. pruned them and pruned them and pruned them. And it just, it didn't do any good. And I I actually think it hurt my production because it wasn't feeding the plant. So this Mm. year I'm just, I'm just going to let it happen, man. Like I can't fight it anymore. It's just, it takes too much mental power. So I'm just going to replant, you know, they're fast growers, like take advantage of that speed. You know what I mean? There is that balance though. Once you're putting uh, squash everywhere in your garden, you're still trying to be obedient when it comes to don't plant them in the same space that you had that issue, which is key. If you had the issue like powdery mildew, as an example, I'm, I'm blending these two, you know, when it comes to issues with this particular plant, Uh, I, 
I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm not even that crazy about summer squash. Yeah. However, I am not a quitter. <laughs> so I've gone from having, look, this is what happens. You have more than you need and then it's taken away from you. And now you really, really want it. Well, that's, so that's where I'm at. That's why it. I like um, that it's lumped in with zucchini because I, I could care less about mm-hmm, summer squash mm-hmm. too, but I do like zucchini. Mm-hmm. So I like that it's lumped mm-hmm. in and it also covers like a bunch of different kinds of squashes. So yeah. Um, yeah. Harvesting? Yeah. Do you want to go over it? Yeah. Harvesting, it's... um, I have a picture somewhere probably on my Facebook from years ago where I have a zucchini that is the size from my elbow to my fingers. And I was so impressed with myself until I cut into it. Yeah. Right? So you you want to harvest these plants when they're younger, when they're smaller. You know, I'm going to go like the size of my hand, which I have pretty large hands. So um, you do also, again, similar to when we talked about eggplant, you you don't want to try to pull this off the plant you want to actually properly cut it off the plant um, and these will keep on your counter for a few as in you know, a number of days you can put them in the refrigerator um, however the refrigerator doesn't um, do the plant justice or doesn't do the fruit justice once you've pulled it off of the plant um, so early and often you can also harvest which I still haven't gotten to blossoms um, there are a few different recipes floating on the interweb about how to to uh, cook up the blossoms from uh, from squash. I'm going to add it on my list again this year to try. I am 100% uninterested in that. I know you I've are. Just, I've never cared about it. I don't know why. It's just they're big blossoms, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I'm all set. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the whole thing, it's like with the eggplant. Um, harvest often and press the skin with a thumbnail. If it indents, mm-hmm. then go ahead and harvest it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the big ones for the most part though I mean it, it's going based on for what it provides it's going to be enjoyable at almost any size it's one of those your summer squash your zucchini and I'm not talking about like a pencil size you know index finger right. size but you can harvest them pretty young and if you if you lose a plant if there's squash on that plant take that in the house and cook it up or yeah. spiralize it or whatever you're doing with it well and the one way we preserve it is we take um, the zucchini and then we we grate it mm-hmm. and then we freeze the grates to make like zucchini breads and stuff like that. Um, you can also just cut it and freeze it whole, like slice it or whatever. You can do that as well. It's just like if you bought it at the store, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You get that. So um, there are ways to preserve it, but you can't, I mean, you might be able to can it. I've never looked into it cause it just kind of skews yeah. me out to think about it. But um, let's talk about the nutrition real quick. So one mm-hmm. medium zucchini has 32 calories, four grams of fat, or oh, excuse me, 0.4 grams of fat, 500 milligrams of uh, potassium, seven grams of carb, 2.2 grams of fiber, 2.4 grams of protein, 55% vitamin C, and 20% uh, vitamin B6. So this is another one of those, just like the green beans were, I think it's more like mm-hmm. a filler. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not. I was like kind of the unimpressed one... when it came to what we we're going to get out of it. Yeah, but... you know, um, but it's a filler. So, you know, if you're on like a weight loss plan or something, it works out pretty good. So, so when you use filler in this uh, series, I listen to it and hear it as it's a filler for uh, your plate. Mm-hmm. As well as the filler for your belly, right? You know, it's yeah. You know, one section less of something else that maybe isn't as great for you. But it's grilling season, baby. Put those things on the grill. Mm-hmm. You know, that makes almost everything taste better. And eat them raw. So. They're very good raw. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very good raw. So, um, and you get to retain all that water, so it's hydrating and all that good fun yeah. stuff. So, um, there you go, people. You, t- we just told you that you should go out and grow summer squash and zucchini. Um, I want to, yeah. We want to know what summer squash that they're yeah, growing. Yeah, whatever. Hold on, let's let's break it down. Let's tell us whatever summer squash, zucchini, because there's all kinds of different varieties, and let us know in the comments. Because again, we're super curious. Um, I find it fascinating what people choose to grow, and also um, shout out to the patrons for helping pick this series. Uh, you know, we've been doing these used to grow series. So if you like this, you can go back and check out the other ones. If you haven't heard them, if you'd like to have input on any of our episodes, then please join us on Patreon. We'd love to have you. And if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Um, everybody be safe, be cool. Tell them something good. Oh, wait, that's the, hold on. Let me try that again. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>
We hope you enjoyed today's show. Please follow us on YouTube at Backyard Gardens TV. Instagram at Backyard Gardens TV. Over on our website, BackyardGardensTV.com. And then we have Patreon at Backyard Gardens. And don't forget to check out our links below to help the show. Thank you so much for joining us as we learn to grow and grow for change. Cut. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.